Hi, my name is Devin Phillips. I'm a Java practitioner, a JVM lover, and a polyglot programmer in my day job. I'm also fortunate enough to help out with organizing some of the community groups here in the Louisville area. And I've been programming professionally since 1993. I work in many different languages, C, C++, Erlang, Python, Java, JavaScript, many others. And um, so when I ran across this technology called VertX, I was super excited because it allows you to mix the best of multiple languages on top of the JVM to create these reactive, highly concurrent, highly scalable applications. And that's what I'm hoping to talk to you about today. If you want to follow along with these slides, they're available using the link shown here. Uh, it may make it easier for following along at home, or if you want to cut and paste some of the code listed in the slides. Uh, and we'll continue on. So what is Vertex? Vertex is a toolkit. It's not a framework. Uh, there's kind of a, a difference in my mind between a toolkit and a framework. A framework generally has constrictions on how you can program. You know, if you're using Spring, you've got to set up all your Spring beans. If you're using Java EE, you have to use some of the things that are built into Java EE, or they give them to you whether you want them or not. Vertex is a lot more modular, and it really just provides you with tools for to making uh, concurrent, reactive, and clustered applications. Like several other projects which are a going concern today and very popular, Vertex is event-driven and non-blocking, and it allows you to avoid many concurrency issues by making it easy to perform shared nothing programming. It works on an actor model similar to Erlang in that you can just send messages on the event bus, Right now, version 2.x is the current released version, and it supports uh, about nine different languages, including Java, JavaScript, Python, JRuby, Clojure, Scala, Groovy, Salon. And so you can write code in any of these languages and have them all running inside the same application. This makes it uh, very easy to use the right language for the right work at the right time. Vertex Core is great for applications that need to do middleware or back-end processing. Adding the Apex module on top of it makes it somewhat easy to write web peer applications. Uh, and the framework in, or the toolkit in and of itself provides many building blocks for writing applications. Some of those bricks are HTTP clients and servers, network clients and servers, uh, JSON serialization, asynchronous I.O. for network and file system, DNS, streams, parsers, metrics, and clustering. Uh, this is kind of a a la carte toolkit because if you choose Vertex Core, you get the basic tools. If you add on modules like Apex or the asynchronous JDBC or the metrics, you can add those modules if you want them, but you don't have to use them and you don't have to clutter up your application with them if you don't feel like you need them. Vertex is lightweight. Uh, the core library is about 650 kilobytes, uh, distributed as a single jar. It has some minor dependencies like Netty for doing async IO and uh, Jackson for JSON parsing and JSON serialization. In fact, the way you do development in Vertex typically is you don't compile anything, you just run it in a live Vertex application and it will compile the code for you on the fly so you can actually do live coding. You can modify your verticals and Vertex will see that a file has changed, it will redeploy that vertical, and you can see those changes almost instantaneously. Shown here is an example vertical written in JavaScript. Uh, remember, all these verticals run on top of the JVM with whatever language library you're using. 
And this particular vertical is a static HTTP server. Uh, it takes a request, has a, a, a Lambda function that checks to see if you're requesting the root of the web server, and then hands off to an asynchronous method to grab the file out of your web root and send it across the wire. Uh, something to note here is that the send file method doesn't have uh, 404 handling in and of itself. If you want automated 404 handling, you have to add the Apex web module. But you could put a callback on there for handling errors if you'd like. You can add another argument to the send file method that's a Lambda function to handle errors. So what makes up a Vertex application? Well, the main building block of Vertex is these verticals, as I said, and they should be small and single purpose, and that makes it easier to debug and easier to modify as you go forward. It kind of follows the Unix philosophy of build a bunch of small, powerful tools that do a single thing and do it really well, and then you combine those together like Lego blocks, and you end up with a, an extremely powerful application made up of small components that are simple to understand. You can take a collection of verticals and put them together into a module that can either be run standalone or deployed as a library in a Vertex application. Modules are typically packaged as jar files. And in fact, from Vertex, you can deploy those modules straight from your artifact repository, something like Nexus or Artifactory. You can, within your code, say deploy vertical, give it a Maven group artifact version coordinate, and it will pull it out of the Maven repository it's currently aware of, whether that's local or Maven central, doesn't really matter. And it will actually deploy it and start it with whatever configuration you feed to it. Now that's pretty cool from a continuous deployment standpoint, because you could actually set up your continuous integration server to call a Vertex event to automatically deploy code as it's approved through your system. So you commit code, you tag it, your continuous integration system grabs it, builds it, runs all your unit tests, perhaps runs some integration tests if you'd like. If all of that passes, you could have logic that says, okay, everything's good, we think it's pretty happy, automatically deploy it to staging or your red-black environment and it's done automatically. Very quick, very simple. Some of the features of Vertex as a toolkit is that it has clustering built in as a base tenant of the toolkit. Uh, there are two implementations. The most uh, uh, mature one is based on Hazelcast. And so it can automatically detect Vertex nodes running on the local network segment using multicast DNS. Uh, and so when Vertex starts up in a clustered form, the event bus, the way that you send messages between verticals in this shared nothing actor model, uh, gets clustered along with it. So you can send data anywhere in the cluster without having to be aware of where it's going in the cluster because Vertex abstracts that for you. Uh, so if you write your application and it works in your local dev environment, all you really have to do is add the cluster flag and boom, by default, it will use multicast DNS to detect other nodes and it will run in a clustered manner. You can even add the HA, high availability flag, and the quorum flag that will tell Vertex to keep a certain number of instances of your modular vertical running on the cluster. So if a node fails, Vertex will detect that node failure in the cluster and it will migrate your application or that vertical that is in an HA configuration to another node that's still alive and healthy. As I said earlier, this is very similar to a Erlang or ACA style actor framework. Uh, it uses an event bus to send messages back and forth. The event bus is most effective when used with strings, so the standard data format for talking on the event bus inside of Vertex is using JSON. Uh, we're all fairly familiar with JSON, and Vertex has some nice tools to make manipulating JSON very easy. 
unlike some other actor styles, um, Vertex is not single threaded. Vertex has an event loop. It runs that in two separate threads by default. Uh, and it also has a thread pool, which is equal to the number of cores on the system by default. But those are all configurable. Shared memory is possible in Vertex. It's considered bad form if you can avoid it, but sometimes when you're working with legacy code or legacy libraries, shared memory is unavoidable. So in those cases, you can use shared memory objects across the cluster. Uh, just realizing that distributing that data across the cluster can be an expensive operation. Internally, Vertex manages those threads, as I explained before, and um, you can run anything you want in those threads, just realizing that if you run something inside of the event loop, it will block the event loop if it's blocking code. So you don't want to do file, manual file operations or database operations inside of the event loop. That's the golden rule, and the really only hard and fast rule required for working inside of Vertex is don't block the event loop. Luckily for us, it's pretty easy if you need to do something blocking to do it inside of Vertex. And the way you handle that is one of two ways. You can deploy a vertical as a worker vertical, which means that Vertex will spawn up a pool of workers. You determine how big of pool you want. And it listens for mess that those verticals listen for messages on the event bus and so if you send a message to do, say, a database operation through a worker vertical, that um, the first available worker vertical will get that message and handle it. And if you have enough operations going on that you've exhausted the pool of workers, those messages will stay queued until the next worker vertical is available. Uh, this all happens off of the event bus so that you don't have to worry about blocking. But there's a second way also to execute blocking code. And this is a little better for one-offs or simple situations. And that's using the execute blocking method of the Vertex object. Execute blocking takes a Lambda function uh, as its first parameter and another Lambda function as its second parameter. The first parameter, uh, the first Lambda function contains the blocking code that you need to execute and as a parameter, it takes a future or a promise if you're working in JavaScript, whatever you want to call it. And when you're done with your blocking code, you load your results into that future and say future.complete. And then your second Lambda function that you pass into execute blocking takes those results and does something with it inside of the event loop or passes it on to another vertical, does whatever processing needs to be done. Uh, a prime example for using execute blocking is often when you need to run something external to the JVM, like if you need to shell out and run a local command or something. Uh, execute blocking makes that very, very simple. And here's what execute blocking looks like. So as you can see, we take the vertex object, we call the execute blocking method and pass in a Lambda function. Uh, and a second Lambda function. The first Lambda function, as I said, gets run off of the event bus in the Vertex thread pool. The second Lambda function is back inside of the event bus so that you can do further processing or handing off to other verticals. And that's the basic overview of Vertex. And the point of this presentation was to get through the slides quickly so we can actually do some hands-on coding and make some real Vertex applications. Uh, the example I was going to go through in this session and have gone through in other sessions is writing a distributed, clustered, highly available chat application with database logging and auditing. Um, as you see here, here are the only tools you need for writing a Vertex application. You need Java 8 because Vertex relies heavily on Java 8's Lambda and Futures and Completable Futures. Um, Maven 
it, because I've created some nice archetypes to make developing these applications quick and simple. And the vertex distribution itself is kind of uh, optional. It allows you to run vertex applications from the command line very easily. But the Maven archetype that I've created will also package up runnable jars for you using the Maven Shade plugin. Uh, this archetype generate command, as you see here, will generate a stub project using Vertex with JavaScript running inside of Nashorn. Uh, I have another Maven archetype for doing this in Java. And by the time the session is presented, I will have a third archetype, which will allow you to run in Ruby. Uh, and the documentation for Vertex can be found currently for the version 3, which this talk is based around, is at vert-x3.github.io. I look forward to the opportunity to speak to attendees at Java 1, and I hope I can make them as excited about Vertex as I am. Thank you for your time, your consideration, and uh, I hope to see you in San Francisco.